All right, today we got two special guests for you. We got Preston and his pops, Justin Masiangelo. How you guys doing today? Good. We're doing good. Good, good. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate you guys coming on the Blacklist in MX, man. It's a pleasure having you too. Well, thank you. Not a problem. So let's yeah. let's let's get started, man, because you 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 got a you got a nice history uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and some stories to tell, man. And I'm and I'm excited to hear everything. So so let's get going. But I wanna I wanna take it from the top. Pops, and this is to you. This is to you, Justin. Yes, sir. How come you got Preston in the motocross? What's the reason behind it as a child? Well, that I mean, I, I don't want to really drag this on because I know I will. It's okay, but, man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, essentially, when, when, I was, when I was his age, I, um, I was really into moto, but uh, we were nowhere near being able to, to afford it. And my, my parents really had no interest. I have five other brothers and sisters, and mm -hmm. they had no interest in, in supporting that, uh, that hobby. But, I mean, I was... I was obsessed with it at the time. Um, I, I kindly, finally, when I was about 15 or 16, came to the realization that that was, that was never going to happen. Although I had bought my own dirt bike with my own money, I kept it at, um, I kept it at my best friend's farm, and they, mm -hmm. they never knew I rode dirt bikes, uh, mm -hmm. let alone I, and I did a handful of races, but that's about as far as it went. Okay. Um, what I did get interested in is, uh, is the, is the pedal side of things. So. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I got really into, into cross country and downhill mountain bike kind of in the, in the early stages, you know, mid, mid nineties. And, and, um, you know, when some of the, uh, some of the guys that are racing moto right now, I mean, I raced some of their dads and, uh, I, I eventually stuck with it. I, and I did two years of pro, uh, Canadian national circuit and part of the, uh, part of world cup. Mm -hmm. And I, I did okay, but by all means, I was not, I was nothing, um, wasn't setting the world on fire, but I was doing what I wanted to do with how much money I had to do it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it was, uh, I, I got to live a little bit of the dream that was in my head I, enough, to, enough to sort of get me through. Right. I mean, I, I was kind of on my own. There was nobody supporting me. So I just, I just did it for whatever I could do. And, and that, uh, that kind of, you know, that it, the sport faded away a bit for me uh, after I met, uh, you know, their mom, my wife, right now. Okay. And and, uh, and it, you know, things kind of laid laid low for, you know, the first two to four years of our our marriage in terms of athletics for me, mm -hmm. uh, to the point where I almost did nothing. And uh, you know, when Preston was nearing age three. Uh, you know, we took to the, took to the training wheels really well. This is, you know, this is before we had strider bikes and Stasix and all these mm -hmm. kind of things. And then he, he was off the training wheels in no time. And I literally, uh, at, at the time I was, um, uh, I mean, I, I work as a, as a contractor now, but I've also, uh, worked in the motorsports industry as well. Um, in between a lot of the you know, recessions and things like that. I have another trade that I can fall back on. Okay. So I was working at Honda at the time and uh, they actually would let me take a CRF 50 for the weekend, no charge. Cause again, like, I mean, we were, we were broke. I mean, we were mm -hmm. a little three piece family and, and, uh, and it, it never really got any better because motocross always kept us broke. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. But, uh, but I took that CRF 50 and, and, um, and it was like, when Preston started on that, he started just before his, his third birthday. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like a lot of kids, he just, he just took to it, whether it be, you know, sound of the engine or whatever it was, he thought it was cool. And within six months, I mean, he was, he was racing that thing um, at, uh, at Tilsonburg when it was still open here in Ontario when we had the indoor track. Oh, okay. um, and then it, it just... It, it kind of, it just kept going from there, you know, same old story, you get a, get a CRF 50, it's no good in six months, you get a KTM 50, it's no good in six months, you go to a Cobra, so on and so forth, right? And mm -hmm. so that's kind of how it, how it initially started. And it was obviously like, I mean, I, I'm sure a lot of dads can speak to this, but I mean, you know, the, the kid probably doesn't know he wants to ride dirt bikes and the dad kind of pushes it on him, right? Yeah. Well, that 50 but seemed yeah, like it was a, ble a blessing in disguise, man. It, it was a good start for you, for 100%. sure. I mean, you get into Honda and they give you a bike and, and 
for him to take the bike and adapt to it and get as far as he's gone, that's like the root of everything, man. It's like you, who would have known? You know what I mean? Yeah, no, no, if, if they, and I mean, because there was, we had no money to buy one. I mean, mm -hmm. I was just lucky enough that, uh, you know, the boys in the sales department were, were, were pretty lenient with me. And I just used to, I mean, I used to have to have it waxed and washed every Monday because it would go back on the showroom floor. <laughs> Another three or four hours older, but. So when did, when did, when did, when did racing begin? So like, like I said, I mean, racing for him, uh, it, 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 he was about three and a half. It was the winter of God knows when, whenever three and a half was. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, I mean, it probably would have been like 2010. Yeah. Nine, 10, whatever yeah. that winter okay. was. Okay. How and, old are you uh, now, Preston? I'm sorry. How old are you now? Uh, I'm 15 turning 16 in four weeks. Oh, okay. So happy early birthday, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Not a problem. Okay. So, um, yeah, so he was, he had just turned three mm -hmm. and you know, I was, I was a pretty young dad. I mean, you know, I, I think I was 20, 25 at the time or whatever. So I really didn't have safety in mind. I just wanted to see my, my, my firstborn son race, race a damn dirt bike. Right. So, um, we, we used to have a, an indoor arena here in Ontario and it was, um, I mean, for, for a lot of people, it was. I mean, it, it wasn't really up to par with, with what they wanted to do in terms mm -hmm. of winter riding, but for a 50 or a 65 rider, it was the, it was the greatest place uh, that we could have asked for, for, mm -hmm. for somebody that wasn't going south or didn't have the money to go south. And so they used to run a little, a little arena cross series here in Ontario, uh, you know, once a month, sometimes twice a month. And, um, and that's where he started. I mean, we, we used to go every Wednesday night was a late night. I'd come home from work and, mm -hmm. uh, and I would, you know, I'd pack up his KTM at the time and, and we would go until they kicked us out. <laughs> and, um, and he just, he just, he gained, um, he, he gained so much so fast because we did it so repetitively. Mm -hmm. Um, my wife was working, we, me and him really had nothing better to do than, mm -hmm than to go and do this. So uh, we would race them on the weekends. And I mean, it's not like it, he, did, he didn't start off with anything to talk about. I mean, he, he was, but you know, he, he was three years old and he wasn't finishing last. So mm. that was, that was, that was good enough for us at, at the, at the time. And I mean, you know, he was in a four to six age group and he was three and the fact that he wouldn't get last was fantastic. Yeah. And, and that, and that's when that, that's when it started. And then that, uh, that spring we tried, um, at the time we tried, uh, we got into TBR here in Ontario mm -hmm. and, uh, we, and, and, and TBR was really the, 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 the cut and still is the cultivator of grassroots, uh, motocross for Ontario anyways. And there's mm -hmm. lots of, there's lots of little clubs like this all over the world, but, um, they're a grassroots club and. And man, did that ever, did that ever hit him hard when he started outdoors? I mean, it was, we went from doing a little bit each weekend. I mean, and you know, like, like it happens for most moto families, you know, within two months, you're remortgaging the house and buying campers and, yeah. and all kinds of stuff to go to every single one of these TVR races that, that we could. And, and I knew nothing of, of the moto circuit. I mean, mm -hmm. cause I was mountain bike, remember? So, I mean, I knew where and where to go and what to do for on, on mountain bike side of things. But I mean, I had no clue mm -hmm. that even Ontario had that vast of a, of a motocross. I mean, I had no idea about CMRC. I had no idea about that. We Canada even had a national, a pro national circuit. Mm -hmm. So anyways, uh, TBR was something that we stuck with for, for quite a long time. And it, um, it aided him. Uh, I mean, it really built the confidence up because, uh, we were fortunate that he, he took to it really well and, and he, he got pretty good, pretty fast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was exciting for uh, me and my wife, you know, we're 26 and 24 year old parents and, and the kid was, was flying. I mean, he was beating all the nine and 10 year olds and, and it was, uh, I mean, you know, in hindsight that probably, you know, fueled the, fueled it too quickly, fueled the flames too quickly, <laughs> because I mean, like any, like if your kid wins at anything, yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be moto. If they start winning at anything, the parents are going nuts. Yeah. Regarding. It doesn't matter how much control you have, right? Yep. That fire is lit. Now you can't put it out, huh? <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> 
no, no. You you get once you started here in Canada, you, you started getting well, and you decided to pack it up, man, and and spend your whole pretty much your whole entire career as an amateur in the states. When was that decision made, and why did you make that decision to take him over there as an amateur to to, to spend that whole career, that whole amateur time in, in the states to race? <laughs> do you, do you remember when the first time I went to states? It, it was like. Uh, when I was like six or seven, yeah, at, we, around that time, wow. we were, uh, you know, we'd been doing well here. We had moved from TVR and we actually started simultaneously doing uh, CMRC at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that part of the series, this is, you know, before we had, uh, you know, there was another one called CMX and, and we were, I mean, we were racing literally as many things as came up okay. and it was, uh, you know, it was expressed to us, uh, you know, maybe Preston was doing well, maybe you should give it a shot uh, mm -hmm. over the border and see what the competition was like. Uh, one of our friends, uh, you know, who we're still friends with to this day suggested this. And, and, and once again, I, it was absolutely blind to me because mm -hmm. um, I didn't know where to go and how the system worked. I knew nothing of Loretta Lynn's. I mean, that was, and, and, uh, and we started doing our research on it before we went. And it was actually a, 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 a program that MX Sports, MX Sports had put together um, a bit of an event promo for Loretta's at the time. And when I saw it and, uh, you know, at the time it was uh, the big, the big little kid at the time was Ryder DeFrancisco. And, okay. and uh, when I saw what that kid was doing and I, and, and I, I saw a number of other kids slightly older than us, and I'm like, where is this happening? And, and, and how do you do this? Because it seems so cool. It wasn't even about getting to the point of, we were never thinking about anything in terms of winning anything at that point. It was just, I, you know, the experience. I mean, I, I race as a kid because I, I like the environment of the racing. I mean, I friggin hated training, <laughs> but, but I knew it. I knew to, to do the events, the events are what, what got me going. And the bigger the event I could get to, the, the more I would go hard at the sport. Mm -hmm. and, and this was no different. It was just him, not me. And uh, so when I found out about Loretta's, I'm like, this is it. And, and I knew about Loretta's before I knew about Walton. And then when I found out about Walton, I'm like, holy crap, there's something actually here that you can do yes. this, right? So that year, we, we actually did Walton um, as a, uh, a four-year-old mm -hmm. in, the, in the four to six class. Um, and he, I mean, he did all right. I mean, I think he finished middle of the class and, okay. and, uh, and it was, it was actually, I mean, it was a pretty, pretty good eye opening experience for what Canada had to offer mm -hmm. even before we crossed the border. And, but we were, I mean, we were, you know, we were kind of striving to, even if we didn't do well in the States, we wanted to have more competition to, to amp them up even higher so that when we came back to this four to six class the next year, Maybe we could do something. Maybe, yes. you know, I think he got 12th or 13th. And, and I mean, and that was great because I had never been to a national event of any sort. Mm -hmm. And and that year, actually, at Walton was a real, it was one of the good ones. I mean, you know, Walton's had some great ones and some bad ones. And that was one of the good ones. So it, it stuck with us. Like, you know, we got to do Walton. Mm -hmm. And now we got to try to pursue this, this Loretta Lynn's thing. And um, we went, we, that September, we started in Michigan racing District 14 and uh had some real good success racing racing the ktm 50 got starting to get get the know-how and and people are starting to explain about this loretta lynn's and how you qualify it mm -hmm. and it was the following year so he was he was five or no he was five or he was six he was cresting six i think yeah yeah and um yeah because he had turned five and he was cresting six and and that was the first year we attempted and me because i had no idea mm -hmm. i he was racing a, a senior ktm 50 senior at the time i didn't re i didn't even know when i showed up to a Lorellans qualifier that you had to be racing a four to six bike to be in the four to six class you couldn't race a senior bike oh. so so and that's all we had so we showed up so i actually i i was forced to put him in age group up so age group up just to it was either that or we'd go home and we just traveled all the way to south michigan yeah Right. And, uh, and so I said, all right, he's a seven, eight. So he was, he was actually a year and a half too early. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and that uh, you know, in hindsight, you know, there's there's people that that follow the these rules very strictly and and keep their kid in their age group and all that kind of stuff. And and you know what, there's a there's a method to that in terms of you know the end game. I never listened to it. <laughs> I, I've always had, whether it's been good or bad, we've always had him a class up since that first day. Okay. And so he raced seven, eight and the, his first regional qualifier, he missed it by like three spots. Okay. And, uh, but I mean, we weren't upset because we, we looked at the four to six class that he should have been in. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he would have been into Loretta's before we knew what Loretta's was. Yeah. Okay. And so, so we weren't, I mean, it wasn't discouraging. We went home and it was, we, we came back to Ontario and we, and we started racing here again. We did Walton that year. And, uh, and because of our, uh, uh, you know, us pursuing the U S um, in that first little stint, I mean, you know, we come back to Ontario and we gain even more speed and then we go to us the next weekend and we gain even more speed mm -hmm. and we were able to win the four to six championship that year, uh, at, at Walton. And that was the first, uh, the first, you know, the first of, uh, of many 50 championships, um, that started coming after that. And once the confidence was built with him, mm -hmm. um, the mini thing kind of really took off for him. Okay. Now, once, once it started taking off and you guys started building momentum, um, you guys started turning heads. When did you finally start getting support? Well, we, I think it was, uh, were you still on a four to six bike? You know, you're, you want to no. oversee it. Yeah, it was Cobra Canada. That's was, right. Yeah, we started helping. Yeah, it was Chris. It was Chris Williams. Yeah. So, so Chris Williams, after that, um, after that four to six championship at Walton, uh, Chris Williams, who who runs Cobra Canada, uh, was willing to help Preston out. And for, first of all, because he was doing well, and second of all, to get him on a Cobra and not a KT. <laughs> no, okay. okay. Right. <laughs> and and so and we and we took that. I mean, it was it was so. Uh, you know what Chris was doing at the time still does to this day the, mm -hmm. the support that he was doing on the Canadian side uh, for for many riders was uh, I mean it was unparalleled there was nobody even thinking of helping out five-year-olds at the time and he was yeah. doing it all yeah. so so we did this little one-year deal with Chris and and that um, that kind of spawned into because it also put us into in touch with the guys at the factory in Michigan mm -hmm. um, and because we were we were racing uh, so much District 14 at the time. It was it was cross the you know it was crossing over um, all the time. You know we we'd be Chris Williams would be looking after us in Canada. He's from Windsor. We'd be we'd be starting to deal with Cobra USA, which was you know basically just over the border. I mean it was like Windsor Detroit, Windsor Detroit. Um, you know we were living in both places almost. Okay. And and as the District 14 per thing progressed, and he started winning those state championships um we actually were i think we did baja brawl in his ama six year okay and uh one of the reps from cobra he, he was able to win it he win the four to six class at, at the brawl and uh one of those reps at the time asked if we would be interested in in signing a, a two-year to cobra factory elite team nice and uh, obviously, we were we were really happy with that because I mean, I I expected I mean, I never expected anything to come out because I mean, I figured well, you know, we're we're Canadian, doesn't matter how fast you are, you know, it's it's not something that an, an, especially an American based company was really I mean, you know, marketing wise, I I would thought they were um, would want to stick with Americans, mm -hmm. uh, but no, this, this one guy took a chance on on uh, on Preston and. Uh, and it, it, it kind of stuck really well. That, that guy was a good rep for us. He, mm -hmm. he, uh, he, he always went to bat for us the, the whole time, re regardless of what his results were. Even after we left Cobra, I mean, he was, he was, he was still on our team, right? And uh, we were, I mean, like I said, his, his 50 stuff was, was great. And I, it, it's, it was probably the best time, I think, for us, because not only was, it, was he a little kid, so it was still, it was still cute stuff, it was, you know, it was, he, he was, he was cute, but he was winning. So it, it was, it was, it was a real fun time for us. Um, we, we, that same, the following year, we actually got chosen um, to do the 2014 uh, KJSC at Toronto, the, the, at the, 
which was which ended up being the last Supercross that ever happened hmm. um, at Toronto, the one where you know Stewart won, and and I mean it was a Toronto 2014. I mean you couldn't have asked for a better pro race, and then on top of that we had a a, a ton of amazing kids in KGSC. Mm-hmm. Um, some we knew, some we didn't know, we know now. And, uh, it, I mean, the, the, the field was just hammered. Like there was, there was great 50 riders left, right and center, all the way back to, I think 12th place. Wow. We were, Preston was, uh, not only lucky enough to win it. Um, I mean, he, he put on a, he put on a good show. He, he pushed hard. I mean, he got the win in, in Toronto. Um, it was you know, it was unbelievable. Those KGSC things uh, for a lot of people is still something they will, they will remember, even if they won a Supercross championship when they were a pro. There was something about that, that program that um, seems better. I don't know if it's because the kids are younger. It's one of their first achievements usually yeah. in the sport, mm-hmm. you know. But, um, but that earned him a ticket to race that year at Monster Cup in Vegas. Oh, really? So the, at that time, if you won KJSC, if you won your round, you went to Monster Cup. I mean, it doesn't work like that anymore because we don't have Monster Cup. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, you went to go race Monster Cup. And, and uh, when we got the roster for, for Monster Cup, there were some hitters. Like, there were some dudes on that <laughs> list that mm-hmm. I knew. I, I didn't even know the U.S. scene very well, mm-hmm. but I knew the names. I mean, it was, okay. it was Nick Romano, Julian Ballmer. I mean, like, there was... There was kids that today are still the absolute pinnacle of sport. Mm-hmm. The uh, God knows what happened. We went to that. I don't know if the lights got in his eyes or whatnot, but he he won Monster Cup as well. Congratulations! And, uh, man. Wow. Yeah, and it was and it was uh, and it like it was not a. I didn't expect anything out of that race because it mm-hmm. was a super difficult track. Mm-hmm. super high speed like the obstacles for a 50 the obstacles for a 250 were bad the obstacles for a 50 were impossible yeah, yeah. and uh he, and he won the thing so and we ended up so the, and at and that again at that time if you won the monster cup round you won the bike you were riding oh really so we won a, a ktm 50 brand new never had been run only for that race mm-hmm. and uh now you got to remember at the time uh, we were we were just on the on the edge of like you know we had basically done our deal with Cobra at this time, and when we went to uh, to KTM the next day, we drove to California the next day to pick up this bike from Vegas, and uh, and Christy at the time was in charge of Orange Brigade and as well as KGSC. And uh, we had a good talk about KTM up until I said that we just signed that <laughs> with Cobra yeah. for two years. <laughs> and uh, but that's here nor there. I mean, uh, we that's uh, that was already a, a done deal. But I mean, um, we ended uh, we ended up selling that bike. I wish I hadn't, mm. but we ended up selling that bike to get home. Okay. Okay. Right. Man. So it was like it was everything we had to do it. Yeah, and you know there's some of this most of the sac. I mean there was a lot of sacrifices and I mean everybody does sacrifices in yes. sport everybody does sacrifice in every sport this is just the ones that we made mm-hmm. but we, we sold that kit we sold that bike and um, you know we hung out for another couple of days in Cali and, and you know saw the scene saw the stuff you only see on TV you know what I mean mm-hmm. and, and it was cool for all the kids his sister I mean everybody I mean my, my wife's from Scotland she had never even dreamed that she would ever sit on Santa Monica Pier you know, let alone, mm-hmm. let alone, you know, be there and hang out for an afternoon. Yes. So uh, a lot of cool stuff anyways. Um, but, uh, but that, that, that handful of months that, that the 50 cur- that the 50 thing just kind of blossomed out, um, you know, it, it, it set him up for the next, for the early part of his am- amateur years. It just built a confidence that was hard to break. Yeah. I mean, it was, the, it was the ideal thing you want for a racer. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. And, uh, and that, you know, and that's where we, that's, that's where that planted the seed for the U.S., mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So when you got the contract with, with, with Cobra, did they want you to predominantly do the races in the state or did it, it didn't matter where you were at when you were racing? Uh, with, with Cobra, 
they didn't, I mean, they were a little more actually double-sided, to be honest with you. I mean, I, in our contract, we had to do X amount of national races, and we okay. had to do the big five national races. And then they were really, really hot on us staying in Michigan, to be yeah. honest, right? Okay. Um, promoting the product in the homes. I mean, you know, a good portion of Cobra sales at the time come from their home state. Mm-hmm. And... But all, but they were really, they were adamant about Walton. I mean, they wanted him at Walton. They wanted it because it's the next closest, you know, mm-hmm. it's the next closest region to sell dirt bikes. Yeah. Um, you know, you got, you got Ohio, you got Indiana, you got all that and other kind of stuff, but they were mixed, you know, their mixed opinions on, on Cobra versus KTM. Whereas in, um, in Canada, it was, and KTM was early days with their 50s at, at that time. The Cobras were the faster bike. So the more kids in Canada that were racing those Cobras mm-hmm. and seeing, and you know, other people seeing the speed, and I mean, it wasn't just Preston. I mean, there was a couple of, there's, and they're still racing today. There was a couple of bullets in, um, in, uh, in Canada at the time. I mean, you know, R- Ryder McNabb was, was also mm-hmm. on that, on, he was on the R- Road Cobra uh, out of Manitoba. And I mean, when you, when you go back and look at it, I mean, the, there were four or five amazing mini kids, but they were all on Cobras. And at the time it was like the bike to have and, and they Cobra, Cobra, Cobra USA and Cobra Canada, they kind of wanted to, to keep it that way because I mean, they were, they were the underdog. So yeah, they, they loved us racing Walton. Um, it wasn't until we left Cobra in the later part of the 65s, we rode, we rode Cobra 65s for a little bit and, and Preston struggled with it bad. Okay. Um, it, it wasn't the same as riding a, the 50 a, and he, uh, we tried to do the switch back and, you know, run, run two classes, run the 50 class, run the 65 class to the point where he just wasn't getting it. Mm-hmm. And rather than break his confidence on the 50, that was the only class that I ever let him run out to the end. Okay. We, we ran it right out to the end of age eight. Wow, wow. How and then, that? Uh, and that was, you know, his final year of Loretta's in that year. I mean, you know, obviously at this point, we've started qualifying for Loretta Lynn. So, you know, we've been for two years at this point. And, uh, and you had a top 10 finish that year. And then we were, uh, we, we knew we weren't going to stick with the 65. And, and we actually got a, a little bit of a, of a nice program with Team Green in the States wasn't the top tier but it was good support on the kx65 and and that contract was us exclusive okay i I mean they they wanted no they did not care if we raced in canada at all okay now how because those those sales departments are completely different entities right yes yes and how was that balancing that out man racing in the states full-time and and living in canada how did how did that how did you make do on something like that happened to be there so often well i mean days. at the on the parent end for how much i made mm-hmm. it was rough okay. i mean there was there was a lot of like you know this is the this is the the disease or the blessing whatever you want to call it but i mean you sign one i mean you're not going to not sign that deal yeah right yeah but you sign that deal it's it's a full-blown legal Con- doesn't matter if it's amateur or not. I mean, it, it's it's a legal contract yes. with me, like his guardian. Yes. I got to get him to those damn races, yes. right? Yes. And and still make enough money to you know pay the mortgage and mm-hmm. do the racing and so on and so forth. So uh, I mean, I was absolutely. I mean, I was free. I I was freaking out. I mean, I've been freaking out for ten years on how to make this happen. Mm-hmm. I, I, I keep signing them. I kept signing them, signing them, <laughs> signing them. And uh, because I don't, I don't didn't want to let the dream died yes. because I couldn't make it happen financially. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was rough on me. I mean, and for him, uh, he knew it. Mm-hmm. I mean, he knew it was tough it, and it, it was a lot of pressure when you're like nine years old, right? Yeah. You got, you got to keep going. You got to keep doing good. I mean, it was a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. Like, <laughs> I mean, the, the KX, the KX 65 days outside of the 50, was i think up until this year was the greatest time we've ever spent on a dirt bike hmm. most amount of wins most amount of american championships and the the most amount of like accomplishments in terms of like you know being with the top tier yes. of the whole of the united states i mean it's it's one thing to re- to to run with these boys 
once or twice. Yes. But on in those Kawasaki, early Kawasaki years, you could do it every time. Mm-hmm. Now, <clears throat> when did the momentum really start picking up for you? And and once you started hitting these big races, Preston, like how was, I mean, who was some of your your competition out there? Because you got championship wins. Who were you out there battling during those times? Yeah, I had, so obviously the the top guys would have been uh, Ryder Francisco, uh, Nick Romano. They were all on 85s. Or, yeah, when I transferred over to Suzuki, um, on the 85s, those were the top guys. And, um, Deegan. oh yeah, and like Hayden Deegan, those okay. types of guys. Um, so, and I would really only see them at the big nationals like Loretta Lynn's, Minio's, Freestone. Mm-hmm. But locally, in terms of uh, like Michigan, Ohio, those guys, I, I had um, like Christian Janik um, and a couple other of those, a couple other guys like that, that um, they were a pretty big competition locally. So those were the people I usually battled with. Okay, so you put the smack down on them, I take it? <laughs> yeah, I tried to most of the time. Uh, they, I mean, we had some, it, it, we were, it was tough. The Northeast at the time mm-hmm. was just absolutely packed. It was, I mean, you had a couple boys from California, but okay. the Northeast was just jammed with medium to super high speed, mm-hmm. which, and to this day, I mean, I would say of the 20 kids that we would have issues or battles or, or, you know, even, even issues keeping up with, mm-hmm. um, they all ride for a factory right now. Okay. I mean, right now, whether they're in pro already or they're still on the amateur, but I mean, I would say all 15 of them are between the five brands. And, um, and so, and, and I mean, I knew that was going to be the case. Mm-hmm. We, we always knew that was going to be the case. And, and it, um, and I, and we were fortunate enough after, after the Loretta Lynn's of the KX 65, I mean, I think it got fifth overall at, at Loretta's year. And, um, we, we had the opportunity to either stay with Kawasaki, mm-hmm. uh, to again, the deal wasn't quite, um, as supportive as what we got offered from Suzuki. Suzuki was four years long. Like, I mean, it was, wow. it was, it was essentially all of the 85s. Yeah. And, but we, we had to start a year early once, mm-hmm. uh, I, you know, once again. And, um, so, you know, I think, oh God, I don't even know. I, he was barely eligible to race in 85 and we rate and we did it on Minio. At, we did Minios that year on the Suzuki. That was, um, uh, not even a month after we signed, Suzuki USA and at the time you know Suzuki was trying to do the relaunch of the of the amateur scenes and we mm-hmm. so we're just starting RM Army and it was Preston and, and Casey Cochran at the time mm-hmm. uh, for our age group and then we had you know we had Crockett Myers was kind of our star uh, senior guy and super mini guy and and then we had a handful of other just uh, unbelievable kids on Suzuki's um, and so I mean I there was good momentum with that team in the beginning. Like it was, it was a hot, it was the new team on the block. Mm -hmm. You know, Suzuki had been gone out of the amateur scene forever. Yeah. And, um, you know, so to, to, to pick up a handful of kids, um, you know, Cochran was already a superstar. He had many, many championships already. Um, Crockett Myers was, you know, he used to win a lot on the, when the younger 85s, and, and like I said, and, and, and Preston had, had a good banking of 50 and 65 titles. So, you know, that was the hopes is going through to 85s. At, at least, you know, one of these kids would pan out. Yeah, know. yeah. But, um, but, you know, up and up outside of those big races, like Preston was saying, this, uh, the Northeast was just like, yeah. I mean, it, it was, it, it was unbelievable. I mean, it was, it was scary how many people. And, and but the, the good thing is that, I mean, all those years, um, I mean, you, you could not let your guard down for one second. You could not, you could not stop. I mean, it was because these guys were just too good and they did it all year round. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing though, because you put yourself with those guys and it's always good to, you know, to push yourself to those limitations and you got fast guys that are all around you. So, I mean, it just builds your, your, your skill level, your confidence up. 
and and it keeps you pushing at the same time, man. Like yeah, but, yeah, definitely, it did. So when you guys went to that whole eighty five rank and you were you were with Suzuki, what happened after that? Because after eighty fives, you know it's one twenty five. So Suzuki don't make a one twenty five. What direction did you guys do? <laughs> Which, I mean, did you hop straight on the two fifty F or did you hop on a one twenty five and start riding that? Well, I started off on an older model of the RM125 okay. and that lasted for about six months and mm -hmm. then it just it didn't have the power to keep up with the the newer 125s okay. Okay. just because it was so old mm -hmm. so that's when uh, the Suzuki era really ended for us and we moved on to a KTM 125 and we were doing it pretty much by ourselves mm -hmm. uh, for that, for like until the end of 125s. And then at the beginning of 2020 is when I got on the 250, uh, the CRF 250. Okay. And we went from there. And how was your transition from a 125 to, to the 250? It, it wasn't as bad as I thought. Mm -hmm. I thought because of the whole... Uh, four stroke thing it would have been it would have been harder to harder to transition but uh it ended up going pretty smooth and we made it work did you uh did you happen to get any uh 125 championships on a suzuki or or the ktm at all uh the suzuki i got a few race wins but no real championships okay. and i can't remember i think the KTM 125, uh, same thing. I won a few races, but no real championships. Okay. And how long did you? Start I, think, I think we we podiumed one. We podium Oak Hill National mm -hmm. on a K, on the KTM. Okay. Um, that was a well because that was a, that year. Texas was when COVID started, right? Yeah. So we 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 uh, he was doing well. I mean. Um, I think he, he podium. I don't think he even podium schoolboy. I think he podium B class on the 125 at the Oak Hill National. Okay. And uh, and we ended up not even getting through practice at Freestone before before they kick before they shut it down. Mm. Um, but uh, he, he did he did transition. I mean, he was able to ride the 250 pretty pretty well for age and size. Mm -hmm. Where where things kind of fell off the wheels was when you added the racing back into it, okay. um, because he, he there was just not there was not enough under the belt. I mean, he could ride it just fine and he looked great, but then when we added racing back into that, um, it was a whole different world. And that that's when the the big bike struggle thing came in. I mean, if I had kept him practicing for two years. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think we ever would have encountered a whole hell of a lot of problems. But uh, when we got back into racing on a 250, um, you know, between size and experience and, and just how to handle um, a four stroke bike versus a, a two stroke bike is, um, I mean, you can handle it. I shouldn't say that. It's how to handle it in a race situation. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, that, and then so, and that's, that's kind of bringing us up to, you know, all the way up to basically the midpoint of last year, um, we had a we had a lot of stuff to figure out. <laughs> it, it was it, for me at least, and I mean, I don't. Preston got got discouraged with it too, and 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 so did we. There's there's no there's no denying it because um, you know, it, and it was a humbling situation because I mean, we were used to at least being um, able to keep up. You know, I'm not saying that he should have won or or should have been better on on a big bike because um, I thought he did great. But then as soon as, you know, when, when the racing came into it, it was just, I mean, he he wasn't sure what to do with it. Mm -hmm. Us as parents, I, I had no advice. I mean, mm -hmm. I could I could coach the mini kid till the cows come home. <laughs> I got no clue when it comes to, to pro racing as far as motocross goes. Okay. I mean, I, I've never I, I've never done it, at least with the mini stuff, you know, I gained that experience year after year for a decade. Yes. yes. That stuff, I, I mean, I, I, we had dialed, but um, the, uh, God, I mean, the pro stuff, 
it was it's it's so much different for us anyways i mean i know so roll right through and if you're and if everything's primed and conditioned and and for the for the kids that have the opportunity to 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 get the advice and have the teams and have those things that, that transition them i mean don't don't give that up for the world because yes. that that's the hardest kick of the ass we've ever had in all of our our, our racing stint was that uh that that transition of the pro racing i mean like, like the pro riding was great like the, the practice was great but but understanding how the pro format does the the pace the way you got to train you know the the prep the prep we weren't even anywhere near <laughs> like we were 10 percent of what you needed to have done to even top 10 a race yeah in, in canadian pro right okay and and uh so i mean and Canadian pro, and I'm shocked at how the how amazing the level is at Canadian pro. And uh, I mean, there was a time where I thought, well, you know, the uh, American pro series is the absolute pinnacle, and I still believe it is, and I, and I most people would agree. But that intensity still exists in Canada. It's just oh, yeah. not as broad. Yeah, exactly. Right, and I and I never used to think like that until I saw it in real life and I'm like, holy shit, this is no different at the front than it is at the front of Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Right? So it, it scared us all, it, it kind of set us off. Um, you know, we didn't even know, I was asking everybody, I'm like, how do you do that? Like, I, I, I need some guidance on how to put the kid through it because, you know, we were almost to the point where we were calling it a day because we, we couldn't figure it out. Mm. Whereas before we'd been able to figure it out. Yeah. So you had no support. You had be. no support at the time when you jumped on the on the one twenty five at all, and in the, the Honda. We we the 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 one twenty. I mean the one twenty five. We got out of a. We got from Country Corners here in in Ontario, and they gave us a, a break with the the bike a little bit. Okay. But I mean, it wasn't there. There wasn't any. There was no like, contract or, or anything. Okay. Yeah, support of people there. Okay. Um. I mean, we when we were when we were living at Gopher. Um, you know, after after the 125, uh, I mean, Schuster gave us a, gave us as as much as I think he could in terms of support and help and advice uh, when we were on the Honda. But you know, there there's there's a certain amount. I mean, it, you know, I can't expect uh, I can't expect him to uh, you know give us the ins and outs and secrets of pro racing when we weren't on that team. You know what I mean? I mean, he, he had team members to look after and we, we learned a lot from, um, from the Honda boys and we, and Preston used to train with the Honda boys and, and, um, and we got a lot out of that, but it still, it, it was just pieces. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, the, the puzzle was nowhere near getting complete and we didn't even know where the missing pieces were. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. So how long were you on the Honda for before you decided to transition off of that bike? Because right now you're you're on Cowie, right? Yeah, it was. So I got on the Honda uh, mid 2020. Okay. And I took that all the way until the beginning of 2021, and that's when I switched over to the uh, Kawasaki, which is what I'm on now. And why did you decide to make that switch? Um. So. Right now, I'm getting some uh, support from Hudson Motorcycles okay. and uh, Thor Kawasaki Pro Circuit, uh, the Kawasaki team up here. Okay. And uh, they've been doing a lot for me, which uh, I'm really grateful for. And uh, they've really helped me get my pro career going. Okay, that's good to hear. That's good news, man. So <clears throat> now you got a little bit of support, but. As an amateur, like here, you, you were pretty much obsolete. Now you're kind of like flying under the radar. Now you're back here due to, you know, COVID situations. What's the plans? <laughs> yeah, it's, we were, we were gone for a long time and uh, now we're back. And, uh, you know, it's, it's hard because people don't really recognize us because we've been gone for so long, right? So, um. My plans for this year uh, is to do the Triple Crown series again, hopefully all the way through. 
Okay. And uh, I'd also like to get back to racing in the States a little bit because um, I feel like uh, it's just something I need to do, right? I did it for so long and I'd like to get back to it. So we're hoping to get back to the States and uh, continue on. Now, now that you're pro, man, and you, and you want to do all the Triple Crown Series here, and you want to go back to the States, is there something that you're looking forward to racing back in the States? You want to do the Nationals? You want to do any type of Supercross? Do you have any type of Supercross experience? Yeah. Um, yeah, obviously, I'd, I'd like to do the uh, the main Nationals again, like, like Loretta's, Minio's, and Freestone, like Spring Nationals. Um, in terms of Supercross, I mean, there's not much, like amateur supercross uh that you can do here or in the states so i mean i have a little bit of uh supercross experience from racing the uh pro supercross up here but other than that it's uh very like we haven't done a lot of supercross so okay do you spend any time uh training at any training facilities at all when you were back in the states or even here a, we we did, we spent a lot of time at South of the Border mm -hmm. while I was on uh, 85s and okay. Super Minis and then a little bit into the 125s. But uh, other than that, we just go place to place and uh, do what we can. Okay, that clearly makes sense. So what are you expecting out of yourself, man, that you're back here and you're getting ready to do the, the Triple Crown Series? You got any goals? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I've been I've been working hard and I I expect to be between fifth and tenth in the Triple Crown series this year. Okay. That's where I'd like to be, and um, if I can do better, that's great. But it's uh, baby steps right now. Yeah. Just trying to get into it and uh, progress from there. Now, what's the what's the what's the legal age here in Canada to turn pro? Is it like the state sixteen? Is so here it's. Uh, 15 okay. and in the states it's 16 so I should I, I would be able to uh, start racing pro in the states this year okay. not that we're going to do that but yeah I'd be able to okay now you, know, you got a birthday in four weeks so by the time you make it to the states man you'll be free and clear <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> no no let me ask you this you're 15 you train hard man what 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 goes inside of a your training program at 15 years of age how do you prep yourself? It's, um, I prep myself the way any other pro would. Um, I have Dylan Kalen as a trainer right now, and uh, he's been really good. I think we've made a lot of progress in the last uh, six months that we've been working. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm hoping that uh, all this work will pay off when uh, racing starts again. Okay, well, you seem like, man, you had a crazy amateur career, a good one. I mean, from the start of the 50s, from when your dad was riding mountain bikes and put you on the 50, man, up to this point, I don't see nothing but success, man. I'm crazy steps you had to go through to get to the point you're at now, but you're here, man. So um, yeah. I wish you guys nothing but success, man. You guys are a good team, a good energy. I, I can see that just by, by talking <laughs> to you guys. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I can't wait to get out there and watch you ride, man, definitely. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, I, I think I, I think we're uh, we we've we've put our we've put our focus. I mean, last mm. year last year was tough too because we were um, we were trying to build uh, a, a new house for ourselves. Um, you know, where we would have uh, at least a little bit of facility for mm. bikes and a little bit of a track, and so that we were you know previous to this, we've been in a subdivision. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, I used to get bylaw called on us for pressure washing out front, let alone riding. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's not like we got 25 acres here where we can have a full blown outdoor track, but we've got a, we've got a great oval, um, and, uh, you know, a little turn track that is really all he needs in the in between mm -hmm. and, you know, built, built a decent shop, um, so that we can, you know, get these things and work on these things properly instead of. You know, doing them under tents and in the driveway and stuff like that, and and I'm not the first person to do that, but uh, but you know, it's it 
it's uh, we've spent the last year maybe not putting as much effort into racing, but in another way we have because there has been a lot of money to pay back from the from over the years, and a lot of money that aren't is needed to 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 get him kickstarted into the into pro career. Yes, and I mean I'm not going to pay for it forever. Yeah, and that's that's good. That's that's it's his decision now. I mean he's he's got to make it happen for himself the next two or three years so that. Uh, somebody else can take over, right? <laughs> yeah. But um, but we have been, um, you know, I, I I fully admit we have not always had a healthy mindset towards racing. I mean, it, there was a lot of you know win or nothing and and so on and so forth. And I mean, we had lots of good times racing. Don't get me wrong, but I think we also had sometimes that um, were probably not healthy and, you know, spent a lot of money and, and didn't even come back with uh, any kind of sense of achievement or happiness. And it was, you know, all down in the dumps and that sort of stuff. And, 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 and at some, and, I, and looking at it now, I mean, I'm, I'm embarrassed that I had that, that sort of attitude. I, I mean, I'm embarrassed that I had the, the attitude towards, certain racers certain i mean some parts of canadian racing for that matter and mm -hmm. and and so on and so forth and uh part of that is just not not opening up our eyes wide enough to outside of what we were doing what we were doing we thought was the the best like the the pinnacle right and in a lot of ways it was but that doesn't mean that the rest of the world wasn't trying just as hard, yes. blowing just as much money and, and so on and so forth. So I think now we're, we're, you know, we're trying to, and we have been over the past year, we're trying to lose, lose this mindset of, of, you know, it's, it's win or nothing. The, the wins are going to come. Mm -hmm. They're, they're going to come back, but they're going to come back when, you know, when, when the work's been done and, and the, you know, the stars line up there, we're, we're, we're going to stop trying to force these things out when they're not ready to come out. I mean, you gotta, especially in pro racing, if it's one thing I learned, like we, you can't wing it and we've winged it. Mm -hmm. We winged all the whole amateur deal. Mm -hmm. We had a process. We just had a process of winging it that happened to work <laughs> for the most part and, and got, and got him some success. But I mean, you got to keep in mind that that was that success was great for us, but I mean there was kids at levels that we couldn't even imagine getting to. So so and that was always the driving force. We're like, well, how do we get to that? How do we get to that? I mean, we we were doing well. Uh, I mean, you know, he was a, a paid a paid American rider by the time he was ten years old, and and that funded a lot of the American racing. Don't get me wrong, but. Um, but you know what I mean? I, I think we just, the whole pro thing is just humbling for everybody, myself, wife, I mean, the whole family. It's just, we, we're treating racing differently now, um, win or lose. I mean, it is what it is. It, it's, uh, we're not, you know, these things that have happened to us over the past year or in the past, you know, they haven't happened, they haven't happened to us. They, they've happened for us and they've happened so that we can, you know, get better at this the proper way uh instead of the wrong way you know what i mean yeah yeah you had a crazy path man but everybody's path is different everybody don't take that same path man so as you're going through your path you're learning at the same time and getting educated at the same time you know what i mean so yes now, sir and, and, and it built to where you guys are at now and and you're back here on canadian soil and you got a point to prove now and and this is a whole nother path for you you know, what I mean? <laughs> yeah, the saga absolutely. continues, man. <laughs> yep. So, but I want to thank you guys, man. I want to wrap this up. I want to thank you guys sure. tremendously for coming on the show. Both of you, it was a pleasure having both of you guys. we got to do this again, man. I want to get some video footage of you when you, when you, when everything's right and weather's changed and I'll get out there and do some yeah, yeah, for shoots sure. for you. I'd love to, I'd love to get out there and watch you ride, man. And uh, it was a pleasure meeting both you guys, man. I enjoyed you guys' conversation. Thank you for coming on the blacklisted, man. And let's do it again one day. Yeah, man. No, it's been been really good. It's, it's 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 an awesome thing you're doing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Preston, I need a jersey from you, man. Before you get too big. 
<laughs> oh yeah. Before you oh, blow yeah. up, man. I need that. I need that amateur pro jersey before you get into that factory jersey. <laughs> dude, dude. Yeah, we still have some, man. We still have oh, some from well, the last year. Oh really? Oh yeah, we still have. I got pl- I got plenty of room. Oh yeah, all no, I see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, we'll do this again, man. It was it, I enjoyed talking to you guys, man. It was a pleasure having you guys on the show. Like I said, and uh, you guys uh, have a good night, and we'll do it again. Thank you, sir. All right. All the time. Anytime, buddy. I'll talk to you guys soon. Okay, see ya.